this may not be one of the best Venom mob films in terms of story or believability, but hot damn is this movie fun. Lone Wolf and Cub, up next. Mortal Kombat, aka Crippled Avengers, aka Return of the Five Deadly Venoms, is a 1978 Shaw Brothers movie directed by Chang Che. In this film, director Che pulls out all the stops by casting the Venoms, Johnny Wang Lung Wei, Yang Chung, Yu Tai Peng, and Chen Quan Tai, with the former playing the unfamiliar role of villain. Quan Tai plays Tu Tin To, a tiger style expert who once was a great hero but has become corrupted by evil due to a family tragedy. One day, while Tu is away on business with his henchmen, played by Wang Lung Wei, three warriors from a group known as the Ten Nan Tigers invade his home, kill his wife, and chop off the arms of his young son. When Tu arrives, he gets revenge on the three assailants and assures his son, who has survived, that he will make metal arms for him so that he can function. Years later, Tu's son grows up to be a muscular Lu Fang, and after 17 trials, the father-son duo manage to come up with a pair of metal arms that are comfortable and complements the tiger style, which the son has now mastered. The incident with the Ten Nan Tigers created such a chip on the shoulders of Tu and his son that they take over the entire town and rule it with an iron fist, pun intended. Enter our heroes. These four unlucky bastards each have an encounter with the bad guys that results in them being crippled in some form or fashion. Chen sells wares and makes a disparaging comment, so he's blinded for not seeing things the way they are. Wei is the local blacksmith that curses Tu out, so he is poisoned by a drink that makes him a mute, and then his eardrums are smashed to boot, thus making him deaf. Next, we have Ah Kui, who accidentally bumps into Tu's son so they amputate his legs for having clumsy feet. And lastly, there's the hero, Wang Yi, who unsuccessfully sets out to get revenge for the three, but has his head crushed in a vice, which impairs him mentally. The four victims join forces and make their way to Master Li, the teacher of Wang Yi. The old master believes that he can teach Chen, Wei, and Ah Kui how to overcome their injuries, while teaching them Kung Fu, what we are treated to next are some training sequences that last three years and a master plan devised by our heroes to exact their revenge. Crippled Avengers is a movie that is centered around the villain's birthday party, which is the backdrop of the final battle. Leading up to that match are some subsequent fights with Chen and Wei versus Wang Lung Wei's Mr. Wan, a bevy of throwaway soldiers, hopeless schemes, and a few cameo fights from guests who have come into town to celebrate Tu Tinto's birthday with him. One of the best showdowns in the film, and probably one of the most iconic, is a contest between our heroes and the muscular Yang Shun. Without giving the ending to that contest away, trust and believe it is every bit as entertaining as one might imagine. The final battles also are very entertaining, with the one between Chen, Wang Yi, and Tu Chen Chang being the better of the two. As for the acting, it's pretty good, with Philip Kwok taking on his usual leading role. Special kudos to Lo Mang, who has very few speaking lines, but does an excellent job conveying thought and intention. Chang Shang also gets a nod in this film, as he is quite convincing as a hero turned man-child. Sun Chen, he's relegated to more of a supporting role, as is Lu Feng, and believe it or not, Chen Tai Kuang, our villain. No, most of the antagonist's screen time belongs to Johnny Wang Lung Wei, who keeps getting his ass handed to him repeatedly. The fight choreography is mid, and there are no particular styles that are showcased, save for the three strokes of the tiger style utilized by Tu Tin Toe. No, what stands out in this film mostly are the acrobatics, showcased by Philip Kwok, Chang Shang, and Lu Feng. That's where the money lies. This movie, despite its fun and high entertainment value, does have its shortcomings. I mean, the suspension of disbelief that's required in this film is astonishing. We are to believe that three of our four protagonists become kung fu experts in three years. We've got Chen, who has the hearing and intuition that rivals, if not surpasses, a certain Marvel hero. Yeah, right. We've got Wei, who is able to punch, with precision, a suspended jar through a spinning wheel of fire. We have an incredible form of sign language, 
We've got poles that bend back into perfect shape by hand, and metal hands that shoot darts and can extend on demand. The alternate titles of this film seem a bit unnecessary, but it's understandable as a marketing ploy to bank off of the five deadly venoms cachet. Though some may find the exploitation of differently able bodies distasteful, please understand that this was a trope of the times, no different than the black exploitation films that soon came thereafter. Speaking for myself, I thoroughly enjoy Cripple Avengers, aka Return of the Five Deadly Venoms, aka Mortal Kombat. It's a fun time with decent fight choreography, but a little light on story. It's got some unforgettable moments and a few standout performances. There's also a powerful underlying theme about overcoming physical challenges, which I loved. So I would definitely recommend it and give it seven and a half kicks. Well, that's all for now. Tell us how you feel about Crippled Avengers. Is it your favorite Venoms mob flick? Comment below and let us know. And please don't forget to click that like and subscribe for more great content. Until next time, this is the Lone Wolf signing off. Peace and what's up?